Hi guys. Um, so a lot of you have asked me, how do you combine data to create a, a multi-panel figure? So I'm just going to use some uh, example data set that this does not uh, reflect what you will have in your assignment, but it will walk you through what exactly goes in a multi-panel figure. A multi-panel figure is basically a figure that is designed using data from many different types of experiment or multiple types, two or more types of experiment, um, or two or more types of graphs or figures that are combined together to give one common conclusion. So here is an example of a multi-panel figure. This takes, it has some images of cells under various conditions, kind of like what you did, uh, but using a very different type of uh, analysis, a different type of uh, assay. And then underneath, it has two different graphs that are looking at um, data related to the same concept. So up here, the images are from a particular type of assay that is used to examine the ability of cells to invade and migrate from one place to another. Now, cancer cells are known to invade and migrate more easily the more aggressive they are. And so the more they invade, the more aggressive cancer you would think it is. And in this case, we are starting off with an aggressive cancer cell line. And then when we are giving them the treatment, with our selected compound, we see less and less and less invasion in a dose-dependent manner. So this is visually showing you how the low, medium, and high affect the invasive ability of these cancer cells. So you can clearly see that there is very little space between um, the two sides of cells. Cultures here, there's more in the low, and then there is still more in the medium, and then it kind of seems like it's beginning to stabilize. Underneath, in this first image, in the first bar graph, that's the quantification of these images in a bar graph, along with depiction of where significance lies, where is there statistically significant difference between the untreated and the saffron treated in this case, or our natural compound treated cell culture, where you showed in significantly less uh, invasive potential in those cells. And then in the third panel, um, you have cells um, that are being examined using a completely different type of experiment called a Boyden chamber migration assay, where again, you're looking at their invasive potential, but through a different type of experiment. And we haven't shown the images for those, but all they are showing are the quantitation of those results in this bar graph. And again, it seems to show similar effect where the saffron low doesn't really show that much of a difference, but the other two really do show significant difference compared to uh, the untreated control. So that is an example of a multi-panel figure. You are combining graphs and figures from multiple experiments from different ways of examining the same question at the end of the day, and you're combining them to make one single common conclusion. Um, now here you're missing the ABCDs, which is a very important part of this picture. Uh, so here is another example. This one only has two panels. Panel A has a depiction of images that are being looked at according to their ability to be mobile. Uh, based on some morphological markers, and panel B shows that motility being examined in a graphical manner over time. So that's the quantitation of the results from uh, this first experiment, where you're just looking at a little image from there. Uh, so that's what it means when we're looking at multi-panel figure. How would you make this? Well, let's say that you wanted to make an image kind of like what we uh, just looked at, where you want to have some images of pictures of your cell cultures in panel A, and then you want to have a graph depicting cell viability or in, uh, you know, number of cells uh, or relative growth or nuclei per cell, whatever type of data that you want to show. So the first thing I'm going to add are my images. In this case, um, I'm going to add images of the cells, and I'm going to take my different treatments. I'm going to take a representative image of those, and I'm going to go ahead and insert them in here. 
Now, I just kind of put them all together. It will give you design ideas. You don't need to worry about those. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to modify them. So I'm going to take each one and I'm going to make it the size I want, all right? So because I'm going to put them kind of side by side, I need to know which one is which. So you want to be aware of that. I'm going to format it so it kind of doesn't, they all look similar, right? So I'm going to play around with the brightness and, brightness and contrast. Oof, a little too much contrast. Let's make it less. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and then I can put all of them kind of side by side, right? And so I'm going to make them the size I want. I'm going to use the red guidelines to make them the same size. Or you can use the format function and actually you can make them the same size according to that as well. This is kind of a quick and easy way. Oops. See, the red lines will appear and will help you get them to the right size as well. But the other thing you can do is actually um, make sure that they're the right size by using the size function and making them all the same size. So this one seems like it's very, very there. That's better. So there are my four pictures um, that I want to add to my uh paper or in my assignment i'm going to go ahead actually i'm going to make them a little bit smaller because they seem a little bit too big and there's not enough information place to write my info in so yeah, that seems like a good size okay so once i have them side by side uh in the way that i want I'm going to go ahead and label them. I don't have to put them this way. You can put them in a vertical manner. You can put two on the top, two on the bottom. That's up to you. And I'm going to go ahead and label them according to the treatments that they are. So this is my untreated, right? Um, and you want to make sure that if you use abbreviations that you explain them extremely well in your final document. Um, and then I'm going to format that and I'm going to put the second one. And then D, D. And now I can change their names. This is my positive control in this case. And I'm going to center it. And then this one is, I don't know which one it is. I'm just going to make some names to kind of show it as something so maybe that's my grape seed right and i can like you said you could be writing them in um uh, full length or you can write them in a short form right i would write if you have just a single concentration i would write the concentration underneath to make it as informative as possible the more information you can add in your actual figure, the less wordy your caption is going to be because you've already given that information right up in the um, figure itself. And so that can, doesn't have to be repeated now, right? So that's always a good idea to make it as informative as possible. And then um, this one. There we go. Another thing I can add in here is my final magnification, uh, right? So I'm going to go ahead, Control Z. I'm going to write down the name of the cells that I'm working with. Is that MDA468, for example, right? Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to write 400 x to depict the final magnification that I'm using. Then I can put all of that as my panel A. Right. 
Another thing that you can add to this, uh, you know, is obviously you want to make sure that you let me know what it is that I should be focusing on. Maybe you want to point out that there are far uh, fewer cells in mulberry and taxol compared to the untreated, um, and that's visually visible. But if you want to point out a particular type of cells, let's say, that you're interested in, you can circle it. And you can say no fill and then make that outline in a color that it's understandable and I can see it and I can see, oh yeah, that's what they wanna want me to examine. You can also instead use a little tiny arrow to depict it, right? You can make a little arrow and you can use that to let me know that that's something of interest. You can use different color arrows to show different things. So that's just some things that you can show in here. Um, now, obviously, that does not make a multi-panel figure by itself unless you label each one of them A, B, C, D. Well, that's not that interesting. So let's add another type of data along with this um, to make a true multi-panel figure. Um, maybe you want to use your relative growth graph or percent viability, right? Something like that. Uh, so you'll have your final images in your... Uh, Excel sheet after you have made them the way you want, you have uh, done whatever modifications you need to do with them. Maybe you needed, you made um, a graph with them already. You have it fully formatted. All the, you know, all the text sizes are the way we want them. Nothing is uh, different than what we want. It's fully formatted. Uh, make sure it doesn't have any border. Border, no line, yep. So I'm going to take my fully formatted graph, whatever it is that I want to add to this, and I'm going to take it into that PowerPoint, and I'm going to add that in as a picture in the PowerPoint. And now when I look at, put it next to it, I can make it bigger, smaller as needed, and it will maintain its formatting and you should be able to see anything and everything you need to see. Let's say that I wanna combine that with yet another graph for something else in the same uh, figure. So in that case, I'm gonna make another panel. And again, you can use the red lines as your guide. C, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe I already put that data somewhere else that I can copy from, right? So maybe there's something here, let's say relative growth is over here. So we can take this one and I'm going to take it in here and I'm going to paste it, right? And because I paste it as an image, it's going to be maintained as I make it bigger or smaller. So now I have three different types of graphs that are all combined together to make one multi-panel figure, right? And that's pretty much what you're looking for. Once you have the figure completely organized the way you want it and you're happy with everything that's in there, you're gonna select all the panels just by dragging and selecting, and then you're gonna to go to Home, Arrange, Group. You're going to copy it, and you're going to put it in your final Word document. So let's say I wanted to put it in here, I would just go in, right? Um, let's say I wanted to add it somewhere halfway into my document, and I would paste it as an image. It's gonna be a really big thing first, but you can then modify it and shrink it down to the size that you would like so that it is nice and clean. And then go right underneath it and make your figure title and caption according to the instructions provided to you. Okay, so hope that helps you get uh, an idea on what it is that you should be doing when you are making a multi-panel figure.